Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft. I have been over here at our witch and slime farm combo. I've been AFK and I've been getting myself lots of redstone, lots of slimes. And when I say lots of slimes, I mean a heck of a lot, okay? You can see I've got a fair bit in my inventory. This is kind of crazy. This area over here produces way more slime balls than it does redstone. And I'm just over here gathering some of this stuff up because we want to craft it up. I actually want the redstone more than anything, but I will happily take all of those slimes for now. We've got a project that we're doing today, or at least we're starting it today, that is going to require an absolutely breathtaking amount of redstone supplies, okay? It's going to be a next level storage system. And we're building it over at Scar's base, but before we go over there... I want to talk about this slime farm. I also want to talk about this Enderman who's been hanging out here because that means that somewhere around here, this fella's been able to spawn and teleport down to the bottom here. So I got to do more caving to increase the rates of our farm. But also, we can increase the rates of redstone by stopping slimes from spawning because they are taking up the mob cap while they are traveling over here. And that's why I wanted this thing to have an on and off switch in the beginning. You are blocking the entrance, my friend. Please let me go past. I'm not going to look at you. I don't want a, com uh, a conflict. <laughs> um, yeah, so just up here is our slime farm. I'm thinking we should develop an on and off switch for this. And I've got a really interesting idea that involves observer blocks and some sort of mechanics that I haven't really used too much before. But we're going to have to come back to that later on as I'm going to gather up this redstone and we're going to head over to Scar. But first of all, i got some footage to show you. This is actually from the last episode where me and Scar were hanging out together and we talked about the contraption that we're going to build over at his base. Welcome X to Scarlandia. That's when you tune in with the Jurassic Park music, but unfortunately we can't do <laughs> oh, that. That would be so epic right now, wouldn't it? Just keep it in your minds. Silly but yeah, this is my little uh, modern uh, futuristic sci-fi city. And uh, we've got our first skyscraper built up, and then of course the roads are being installed, the landscaping's getting planned out. Uh, but you've become to help me with something. Yes. Help me with my greatest nemesis. Uh, wow, I really butchered that right there. <laughs> your, really your greatest nemesis. Oh. Nemesis, yes, there we go. That's, that's good. Uh, and that is disorganization. Disorganization. Mm -hmm. Well, you got one thing down, man. All the items in, uh, in shulker boxes is going to be perfect, right? I'm going to I'm going to come over here and build you a sorting system designed for shulker boxes, but first of all, we've got to reserve a rather large area of land, right? It's going to oh, be a no, big one. I'm, look I'm looking around. I'm looking around. So if you, you build all the technical stuff, you get all crazy with the redstone and the dust and everything, and then I'm going to come over and I'm going to build a skyscraper over and it's going to be amazing. Do you know I what I'm thinking? I just wonder where we're going to put it. I'm thinking central. Like, you want... Oh, uh, uh, where am I? I thought I'm on top. I'm uh, through the pole exactly where I wanted to go, and then I got confused about where I was. That doesn't make any sense, does it? Um, oh, you just disappeared in front of me. I was like, oh no, hi. where did he go? <laughs> I was doing magic tricks. So oh, yeah. I would suggest centrally because, like, I don't know how you operate, but like, you want your storage system next to your nether portal. You want it to be in relative distance to all the other things you're going to do, right? So yeah, yeah. the center ain't a bad idea. Unless you've got something planned here, I'd say the center, or maybe just over to the side. Like you could have one just somewhere over there near that beacon. So this right here is going to be the skyscraper. Yeah. Um, so that, that's the main uh, skyscraper of a ball. So maybe right here would be good. And what were the dimensions of the build? It's going to be a big one. It's going to be about 41 blocks across. And I don't, I don't think I've even got four. Oh, here we go. I've got a stack. 41 blocks across. And uh, and 31 blocks in the other direction, something like that. Okay, I think that might be bigger than this location. I think we might have to build it off to the side. I think we're gonna have to build this one off to the side a bit. Uh, it will. Mm. Okay, it's gonna it's gonna be a bit of a stretch because it's a square shape, right? So yeah. From the center, and I very cleverly place one over here. If I place uh, two, three, four. Five, six, oops, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's actually 20 from the center. So that's 41 across. And then it's going to be okay. about 31. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It will actually fit inside of yeah. this, this shape that you've got down here. Let's do it. I yeah? think this is good. Yeah, being in the central location, being in the, in the scar, the scar scraper, I think that'll work out really cool. 
Okay. Yeah, this would be good. Next question. Um, okay. I doubt height, height won't be an issue, right? This thing's probably going to be about 12 blocks tall tops. Oh, no, that'll be perfect. Okay. No, that'll be perfect. And what side would you like to be the entrance? Like, which side do you want to walk in from? Um, hmm, That's a great question. You know what? It doesn't matter because there's actually going to be four entrances on either side. Okay, um, just so you're aware, door. the storage system is shaped in a U. So there's okay. like one side that you walk into the storage area from. There won't be another way in. Um, do it this on this angle because I fly from the community build that's, <laughs> from this direction. So this reason. direction right here. So make like a little arrow. Just a little arrow. There it is. There it is. The oh, arrow, there's an arrow. Nice. Yeah, the arrow, the arrow of the entrance and the directions and the pointiness. And uh, I'm, I'm going to starve soon. I've got no food. <laughs> We ate a cake. It was good cake. It was important cake, but it's all it. gone now. But that's all the calories for me. So you know the deal now? We're building a storage system for Sky. You know the location. I'm going to go over there and just set down a little bit of foundation, maybe put a supply list together, things like that getting ready. Uh, as you can see though, I've just come around here and tidied up the floor. We got some villagers that need moving. I still don't know what I want to do with these guys. Should I do a project? Now that's a magic trick. How you found your way into the ground, I don't know, but well done. Um, yeah, we should probably do some sort of project with these in the never. But they will need herding around and put somewhere else because we will eventually expand this. And I've been collecting all of the netherrack that we've been getting from this. And I know someone who could use this. So we're going to take a little bit of a detour and just pop this over at Tango's base because I'm sure he's going to make you. Before we do that though, I want to do a little bit of redstoning over at my base and show you the bedroom over here. We've got fire. I got a tweet from Zavom, so if you're watching, thank you as always. Appreciate the suggestion. Fire and magma blocks back there. Love it. Totally complements the room, and it's not what you'd expect, right? Some fire on display, but it's seriously cool. Also got a button and uh, a flower pot down here, so that's a nice little bit of detail as well. And you can see I've ripped up a bit of the ground. What we're going to do is send a row of hoppers through here. I was thinking about how this has got to now link to the next part of our storage system because I just did uh, a load of sorting of our chests. And it's actually going to be really simple. we just got to put a hopper here. And that's got to point into, hang on, I've got to get this right. I thought I was going to put it into, yeah, no, no, no. We're going to put a dispenser down, sorry, a dropper down here, right? And then a hopper underneath, and that's going to be our new chain of hoppers going in that direction. Then they'll have furnaces above them, and then we'll have the floor right here. So that's all good. We will also need a block here with a lever on it so that we can um, turn this thing on and off. As you can see, the items are already transferring downwards and through the hopper chain. But that means once the items have been sorted, we can look at what's in here and go, yep, let's move it on to the next bit, and off it goes. All right, Tio, all of that is taken care of. Items go up there through this system. When they're done, they go into the next part of the system, which goes around there, and then they come into this bit over here. And I've actually gone and added something a while ago, which is kind of important. We have some redstone over here. It isn't wired up very well. I need to change this. But it goes around into the hopper that's underneath this. And the items that come through from that side will then get uh, dropped into here. So we'll actually be able to see all of the items that didn't make it through the shulker boxes or any of the other storage systems, they'll come into here and then we can set this thing off when we're ready because if we don't have Optifine on, it can get a little bit laggy around here. Um, but that is pretty much the system done at this point. That's that's the storage system finished. It's, it's amazing to say that. There are two more things, though, that we need in this area. I'm not going to do them right now. I'm going to think about it a little bit. A water source and a trash can. So on occasion, there's items that you know you just want to throw away. Somewhere around here, I'd like to have like a dropper that we can open, put in the items, and they automatically get destroyed. And then an infinite water source that's kind of hidden with redstone. I was thinking maybe... Maybe right there, like there's a piston underneath that pulls back and you can access the water. Anyway, we got other errands to do this episode. Tango's base, I believe, is spoiler territory. There's a lot of new stuff over here since I last saw it. Um, so what I thought I'd do is drop off this netherrack. Now, many of you left comments on the last episode saying, don't worry about Tango, Cub fan left him loads of the stuff. And that's true. However, I spoke to Tango and he said that he'd need uh, way more than Cub gave to him, you know. I think Tango's got huge plans for this area. And so I've given him... Oh, that's the wrong chest. One, two, three, and four lots of netherrack. And I've just realized that my sound is muted again because I've been AFKing. 
All right, people, welcome to Scarlandia. Boy, oh boy, have we been jumping around a lot this episode. I need to do Scar proud here, and I'm not going to do him proud with the building. That's his area of expertise. So what I'm laying out here is just kind of like bare bones that he can come in and replace with different materials. Now, what we're building is a design by Nembomb MC, who has done tons of wonderful things and been very helpful to me over the course of... Uh, I don't know, Hermitcraft history, making videos, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and uh, this new storage system he's got is absolutely amazing. It's going to be wall-to-wall -wall shulker boxes around here. And if you'd like to check out the design, see it for yourself, I highly recommend you go watch the video. It is in the description box down below just for you to enjoy and see this awesome system. So it's going to be very big. That right there, one block behind it, is going to be where the shulker boxes are. And the redstone that we're going to build is going to come all the way back out here, which is 11 blocks deep. And that actually brings it over here a little bit, which is just a ways out from where Scar probably wants it to be. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to move all of this forward by about four or five blocks, just so it's uh, a little bit closer to the center and a lot easier for Scar to use. And this arrow down here, by the way, is for uh, you know the direction he wanted to enter this area at, and it's going to be a nice big opening. Oh, it's going to look so cool. But right now I'm doing all the boring stuff. Um, and some of that is getting supplies ready. Look at this. I've got loads of wood for me. Got a little bit of nether quartz. We've got a lot of crafting to do. And what I'm going to make is like a supply chest over here. And then I'm going to write up all of the materials we need as well. As there are going to be a lot of things to collect. I can barely believe it. I've been AFKing at the witch farm for hours. Clearly that thing needs some sort of work. Like the on-off switch for the slime farm. I need to get that going because... Diminishing my redstone supplies here. I came here with I think two stacks of redstone blocks and they have instantly disappeared into these. Okay, and this is not all of what we need. There is 512 redstone torches there, which is just about what we need. And a fair amount of repeaters. I didn't actually count how many in total, but we need a large amount. So 272 powered rails, a stack of jack-o'-lanterns. There's the repeaters, 481, 81 comparators, 658 hoppers, 569 droppers, which I thought was going to be easy because I've got tons upon tons of cobblestone, but actually all of those need redstone. So we need 569 pieces of redstone and then 325 of reservers. We've actually got a long way to go in terms of resource gathering to get to the next step. And it makes me realize that the witch farm probably needs more work done on it as well. So I think the next thing it would be smart to do is work on an on-off switch for the slime farm. I've been AFK here for around three to four hours and got very little redstone. Unfortunately, other players have always been online. And I think they're taking up the mob cap. We actually need a fair bit of redstone to craft the stuff to make this next thing. And I think we've only got on um, a few stacks of redstone. Maybe not even that, really. Look at this. This isn't very much at all, is it? Not even two stacks of redstone. Oh, dear. Um, this farm was supposed to run a lot faster because I had the smart idea. And this guy is still hanging out here. Never leaves. Never leaves, I tell you. I had the very smart idea of coming in here and placing in some water let's just put that there so we can climb upwards you can see that this level right here has got water all the way across it and this is actually how we're going to distribute the water when we build a mechanism to do this automatically so i place this manually there is no um, on off switch or, or redstone going on here at all but we're going to build all of that now one thing to note is that on the sides here it's turned the powdered stuff into concrete there's no way to avoid that that's going to be concrete now and actually, it looks pretty cool. So my thinking was, if we just got this thing turned off anyway, then when I can AFK at the witch farm, there's not going to be slime spawning over here, uh, taking up the mob cap. And unfortunately, because other players are online, I haven't got very uh, much redstone to work with at the moment. But anyway, I've got an idea on how we can get this water to be dispensed here, to appear one moment and with redstone disappear the next. And I think you're going to like it. Crafting dispensers is now quicker and easier. All you've got to do is across like that, back and forth. Click, 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 click. That's a nice change. So I would like to walk you through the thought process on how we get from one thing to another because the more I thought about this, the more obvious the way to do it it became. And uh, it's kind of like dingy down here. Got this dark green ceiling, all the water dripping off of it. I've just come below the slime farm as there's a bit of space down here that we can use. So, uh, first of all, I want to put these down over here. Uh, we're going to be using dispensers to dispense the water, right? And initially what I thought is that we could put one every other block and that we could do a trick with an observer to send a signal through. Now, I'm not going to put buckets of water in each. You're going to have to take my word for this. 
but we will put buckets of water in when we get to the last bit. If we have a chain of observers like this going through, then with an update at the front, it's going to activate the one in front of it, and then the next one, and the next one, and if we listen carefully... Ah, we didn't hear a bunch of clicking because actually it doesn't have anything in. Um, if I put a bucket of water there, and maybe we can put like an empty bucket in, would that work? Let's see what it does. Yeah, okay, cool. So you saw that it chained it further down, even though this one sort of had nothing to do other than dispense the bucket. So now, now I'm kind of curious, what happens if there's nothing for that dispenser to do? Will it still get an update? Yes, okay, that's, that's interesting, that's good. Oh, and it got another update because the water flowed back around to the front of this thing. Fascinating. Uh, anyway, the big problem with doing it like this is that water sources are going to be created between the two. So once we've got one there and there, another one is made in the middle. So that means we can't remove all of the water after. So then I started to think, okay, well, then we need to perhaps place the uh, dispensers diagonally. Although that would create water sources as well. I can't remember how I did this next bit, actually. I think I, think I came up with an obscure pattern uh, along the lines of... Oh, that looks like it. Uh, let's put you there. So something like that would go next, where you have each one going over by one. But then you've got to figure out a way to power this block. And I can't remember if this would actually power it or not. Let's put a dropper in here. Okay, so the dropper's actually going to do nothing, but it's a block that would pass on an update. And it gets powered, so it might actually do that one as well. And it does. Excellent. So this is where we would end up with something wonky. And I believe we've just made a clock of sorts. <laughs> That's, that's a very strange kind of clock, isn't it? Let's put you there and let's sort that situation out. Excellent. So yeah, this way we would avoid creating the source blocks, but it means our water would flow awkwardly over to the edge. So up there where it all goes flat, we would actually need um, some signs as well, as some of the water would push out a little bit further. So we'd need signs across here to hold that water from flowing down below. And it flowing down below might not actually have even been a problem. Uh, but anyway, there is another way that we could do this. This is the way that we're actually going to do it, which is kind of the most expensive way and probably the best way to do it anyway. So if we put a bunch of dispensers facing upwards like this, when we remove all of the water, it will all be gone. There'll be no water sources behind if we power it correctly. So you've seen how we powered these already. How do we do that with observers now is the question. We can put them every other one like this. And then with a dropper facing, well, it could actually face in any direction. The dropper just passes the power over to the next block. If you do this with a regular block, it won't work. But <clears throat> with, a, with a dropper, it, it gets an update across to the next observer. So there might actually be a more elegant block to choose here, but it's flat and we know that it works. So we're going to go with that. So that's going to power every other one of these, which is kind of bad because... Then what would happen is we'd create water sources between it all. What we're going to do on the other side is power the other ones and have two rows of observers. So our lovely green platform over there is now going to have a big chunk of these blocks inside of them. And actually, I think I've done that the wrong way. I have. They're going to have to face the same way as the ones on the other side. And yes, that one's facing up, but we're just making a demonstration for now, right? So if we power this one and this one... Maybe at the same time, maybe they need a little bit of coordination. It's going to power each of these one by one, which means boom, 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 boom. All of our water is going to turn up. And then when we do it again, boom, 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 boom. It's all going to get removed. Do you, do you see what I'm getting at here? I think that's going to work. I think that's going to work just fine. And I think what I'll do is I'll remove the water and build it straight away and see if we can get it to work. All right, just a couple more buckets to go. And we can do a test now. And that's what it looks like. I was just thinking, though, that it leaves a gap on this side over here. Maybe on the floor above, I'll put the gap on the opposite side. And then, if ever, for some reason, it would be useful to know what floor I'm on. Because I can't tell when I'm standing on it. I can look over there and I can go, aha, that means we're on the bottom one. No, that'll never be useful, but it crossed my mind. Anyway, uh, we've got two observers over here. So we give them a flick and we kind of want to watch this, don't we? Let's move the location of the lever then because that might make it a lot easier for us if we were to... Put it just there, then we could, like that. Very good, very good. Did I put it in the right place? Yes. Yes, you see, I just put these dispensers where the water was above, but it's possible I could have made a mistake. I haven't made a mistake. It's all in the correct place. And then give it a flick again. 
Oh, look at that, peeps. Look at that. That's an amazing little bit of redstone right there. Worked first time, no problems. And that means this thing is just an on-off switch. When I hit it, it's going to be on. When I hit it again, it's going to be off. Excellent, excellent stuff. Right, so we build this again on the floor above. I was about to start digging that away. Then I saw that there was water up there, which technically wouldn't break anything, would it? We've got to craft some more buckets. I'm going to need some more iron, aren't I? We have a little bit of a problem in here. Do you know what it is? It's kind of dark down there, right? <laughs> the wrong sort of mobs will be spawning in here if we're not careful. I've got a solution for that. First of all, though, redstone. This this pigman's come by. He's come to check it out. Uh, it is now wired to go up there. What we're going to do is jump up this ladder to have a look. So we know the bottom's going to work. Top one as well. Working absolutely fine. Wow. That has gone very, very smooth. I can't remember the last time a redstone contraption went as well as that. Excellent stuff. Sweet. So... Now we need a way to light this up. I believe... Oh, I'm probably going to get this wrong. But if we use glowstone in the floor, mobs won't be able to spawn on it. But if we use jack-o'-lanterns, they will, possibly. I think that's how it works. That's why people always use jack-o'-lanterns in the farm. So, we don't have any. I need to go and make some somehow. So, we need jack-o'-lanterns. We need a stack of them for the project we're doing with Scar as well. And my plan was to build this area down here a little bit. And then build some farms like pumpkin, melons and sugarcane, all that kind of standard stuff in a ring around that area. But I wanted to finish up all of this before I started going uh, down with our base too far. Because it's such a massive project that it's going to take a long time to do it over the season. So trying to get the balance right is what I've been thinking. But we really do need to farm these things already, especially sugarcane. And cactus would be another one. So basically all of the things right here are what needs farming. Now I was sent something by Near Void, which I really like. Why is my pick not on my hotbar? Um, and it requires us to... Well, it requires me to do a little bit more preparation now that I think about it. But we start off um, with some water and what I'm going to build is basically an automatic pumpkin farm and I'm going to ask you guys if you like the design and perhaps if you want a tutorial or something along those lines but I, I need a hoe and I need some dirt as well to do this so this is the layout that we want to go with you basically build these in a row and it's probably quite easy to stack as well you've got some redstone back here and the next bit is kind of tricky because then what I want to do is place the redstone like that or oh, sorry the piston onto the redstone using that hitbox that it has. So I thought location was going to become a problem because of the way that you're going to place the observer, right? By standing up here, but actually this goes the other way around. So what we're going to need to do is probably dig that down. And there you go. That's now facing the correct way. So then you need two pieces of redstone on this. So I haven't picked out enough redstone uh, like that. <laughs> then a block on the front of it. Bam. And a torch right there. Oh, it uses a burnout clock. That's interesting. Oh, maybe it's because you might... Ah. Um, the piston is bud powered. Ah, oh, I get it. You update the torch after it's been burned out. And then that powers the piston and then the burnout clock puts it back to... No That's a really clever design. What do you guys think of that? <laughs> That's awesome. I like it ever so much. Anyway, that's going to be the poll for today. Do you like the pumpkin farm? Do you think it should be made into a tutorial so other people can learn how to build it? Alright, that's making a fair bit of noise, isn't it? I also brought some bone mill over here so we can get this thing going. And then I was thinking, um, collection. How are we going to collect this stuff? Well... We, well, I have. I've set up a minecart track down below. It doesn't have an unloading station yet. I don't have time to do that right now. But that's something that I'll add. And that'll be the way that we pick up the drops from this. But then that means we've got to make sure that the drops fall um, on these blocks right here. Which should be really easy. I'm thinking some glass between the pistons. And glass across the front means that when they pop off, they, they fall down. And then this thing can pick it up. Well, the timing couldn't have been much better as I have some errands to run so I can stand AFK in the area, which is really good. I uh, wanted to do a little bit of a test, first of all. Uh, okay, straight away, very bad sign. Also, did that just set off more than one of them? Oh, wow. The update goes the whole way down. That's fascinating. Also, where did that pumpkin go? Did this thing get it? Hi, come back here, please. Let's break this block. Yes, okay, so we got it that second time. Maybe then what I should do is build this up a little bit. If we put glass above the pumpkin and in front of it. 
and that updates everything. Uh, then it'll be contained this time, which is a little bit better, I guess. Um, yeah, so this farm, I said about the pole, maybe I should have waited until we finished building it. Another thing that I have with these farms that I'm not so keen on is using the minecart. It'd be nice if there was like an elegant way to pick up the items 100% with hoppers and then chain those hoppers together without using an excessive amount, you know? Anyway, let's uh, let's get this thing hooked up properly and then I'll AFK here for a while. I haven't gone just yet. I was doing some editing and, uh, and then I was looking at the video and thinking, is this bit at the back even necessary? Now, there may be a reason why. The fact that they set each other off, I don't know. That might have something to do with it, but check it out. Does the same thing without, right? Because this burnout torch, uh, torch, it eventually turns itself off. And as soon as you update the redstone, that bit there is going to power the piston. So you don't even need the observer block. And that makes it probably the most compact farm that I've actually ever seen. Jack-o'-lanterns in place. Got to go around and remove all of the blocks that I put underneath to place them. It's been so long since I built with jack-o'-lanterns, I forgot that they required a block underneath to place them. There's not too many blocks in this game like that, but anyway, there you go, all in place. And you may have noticed there's going to be a little bit of a problem, which is that the water is going to flow from here all the way over to the edge. It's also going to flow in the opposite direction as well. So if there are slimes on the platform when we activate this thing, they're going to be going potentially in the wrong direction. Now, if we make it so we've got to walk closer to this thing to activate it, then there's a good chance that slimes won't be spawning by the time we're over here and we flick the lever. However, I'm probably going to just wire the lever up to this point, right? And then there'll be a little doorway to walk through and have a look at the viewing area if you wanted to. So probably best not to rely on that. Here's what I think we should do. We should just put some magma blocks at the end here. Mobs won't spawn on them, so that's fine. If I hold down shift, I ain't going to take damage here. And with this being too wide, it means the large slimes will be able to come over here onto the magma blocks. Now when they spawn in that space, they're only going to go towards the iron golems. So they ain't going to accidentally come over here. And then when the water pushes them in this direction... They'll, uh, they'll end up on here, won't they? So I think that's a, a reasonable compromise. And I know some of you are going to talk about the items that they drop. I don't need to bother picking those up. We've already got stupid amounts of slime from this thing. And hopefully I've got enough of these textures lying around that we can actually build this up and make it look nice on this side as well. Well, I figure you don't need to see too much more of this now. So this is what it'll look like on both floors. I'm also getting rid of those ladders as well. So... As I leave here, I'm going to plug up the floor and say goodbye to it, you know? I was going to say, can you hear that sound? Then I decided to press F5. Yes? Ooh, there's a ghast hunting me. Oh, uh, I think we've got to kill it. Kill it before it makes any damage in here. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, that was easy. Hey, I've never got a ghast head yet. I really want to get a ghast head at some point. Anyway, thank you for all the feedback on the hub. Quite a lot of people saying that it's a little bit plain at the moment that this, uh, this orange on top and the dark glass around the side of the obsidian needs a bit more to go of it. I couldn't agree more. I'm kind of waiting till this thing is further progressed to see where my thoughts take me. I reckon then we'll know what to build in here. Maybe some abstract shapes and bring some other materials in. But the idea is to drop the lava down the sides and I've been preparing this area down the bottom so you can see I've got a large area here that needs to be dug all the way to the lava down below. So at some point I'm going to go up here and break that netherrack. That's going to be tricky, however I choose to do that. But then the lava flows downwards, and we're going to dig this directly down. And there is a big lava lake below us, and I can actually show you that as well, because it's not too far away from where we are. So just down here is where we can see the lava lake, and we can see False's Never Hub as well. It's just down there. So this is where the lava is going to be dropping down, you can see. Is a good probably 15 to 20 blocks away so we won't be encroaching on her area however she might get a good view of what's going on over here because there's this massive lava lake and if you're standing around or you're nearby you're just going to see lava come down from above in an octagon shape and meet the lava lake it's going to be seriously cool but I've got a lot of digging ahead of myself first and I think I'm going to do this in between episodes because I really don't know how much time I'm going to have to dig on this project and here we are back at Scar's area do you know what? I came all the way over here just to drop off a stack of pumpkins, which I haven't made into jack-o'-lanterns yet. And now I'm going all the way back over the witch farm to do some AFK in over there. I probably should have just gone to the witch farm and drop those off later, right? Anyway, that's going to be it for me this episode of Hermitcraft. If you have enjoyed it, leave a like on the video. As always, thank you for your support, and I'll be seeing you in the next episode. Ciao for now. Bye-bye.